I'm in Kobe, Japan, beef capital of the world, my heaven. I'm here to explore the city, check out the wonderful architecture, maybe visit some boutique shops. Nah, <laughs> I'm just here to eat a cow. And this restaurant, Beef Teki Kawamura, is where I'm gonna be enjoying my Kobe beef experience. This restaurant comes highly recommended by my Japanese friends. And look at all the awards they won. I mean, I don't know what kind of awards they are, but that looks like the Kobe Steak Oscar to me. As you can see, the whole restaurant is tip style. The chef cooks everything right in front of you. That's gonna ensure that as soon as the meat is perfect, it's gonna be in your mouth. So I don't know if you guys were also confused by this, but um, before I came to Kobe, I had no idea the difference between a Wagyu and a Kobe and an A5. I literally thought um, Wagyu was Kobe, but they're different. And here's a little info about the meat that I'm about to consume. Kobe is a relatively small, elegant city located about 20 miles west of Osaka. Sandwiched between mountains and the sea, this seemingly calm, laid-back metropolis gives off a modern and international flavor. But Kobe is not defined by its chic architecture and vibrant nightlife, not really, because in this ancient port city, beef is king. Although Kobe beef has achieved a legendary status among steak lovers in the US, most of us have never really had any. Sure, there are are a lot of places that claim to sell Kobe beef, but more likely than not, it probably wasn't the real thing. This is because the USDA requires slaughterhouses in other countries to be subject to the same regulations, facilities, paperwork, and inspection as those here. Also, it's a supply issue, because every year only about 4,000 cows qualify as Kobe beef, and only about 10% of those are exported from Japan. Heck, I could probably eat all those cows by myself. But scarcity certainly doesn't feel like an issue when you're walking around Kobe, it's like walking around New York City and all the Starbucks is turned into Kobe beef restaurants. We hear a couple of terms quite often, especially in the US, Kobe beef and Wagyu beef. And a lot of times people think they are the same thing, which is not true. Wagyu literally means Japanese cattle, which comes from one of the four main breeds of cattle in Japan. Japanese black, Japanese brown, Japanese pole, and Japanese shorthorn. Now Kobe beef comes from the Tajima string of the Japanese black cattle raised in the Hyogo prefecture but it takes much more than a birthright to be labeled Kobe beef. The breed of cattle must be pure lineage Tajima between 28 to 60 months of age. It must be born, raised, and slaughtered in Hyogo. The beef must have a yield score of A or B and a quality score of 4 or 5. It also must have a beef marbling standard score of 6 or higher on a 1 to 12 scale. Now let me explain the grading. Beef grades in both the US and Japan are based on the amount of fat that marbles the meat. The higher the fat content, the higher the grade it receives. The top being A5. In Japan, the standards of grading beef consist of yield grade and quality grade. A of A5 means the yield grade, which ranges from A to C, while the number 5 shows the quality grade, which is based on marbling, meat color and brightness, firmness and the texture of the meat, and color, luster, and quality of fat. Because of this, only about 4,000 head of cattle each year meet the Kobe requirement. So basically, all Kobe is Wagyu, but not all Wagyu is Kobe. Kobe. Hope that was informative and if you already knew all that then I'm sorry your cow knowledge is way better than mine. I got the first lunch set. They say they only get about uh, three cows a month that goes into that set so I want one of those cows definitely. These are three different slices of beef all slightly grilled. This piece of beef is with uh, sesame sauce. These three slices come with teriyaki, garlic ginger wasabi. It's almost translucent and in this spoon the beef is served with a little onion and some greens on top. This seems to be the leanest piece on the plate. Let's try this out. Oh. Oh. Wow. That was definitely the leanest piece of Kobe beef I had so far. But even that, something I would have tasted like jerky if it was any other beef, still melted so beautifully. This is a lot rarer than I typically like my meats, but they said this is a must try, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Let's try this with a little bit of garlic, ginger, and wasabi. That is definitely the rarest beef I've ever had, but there's no gaminess whatsoever. That was simply beautifully clean with a wonderful, chewy, tender texture. And I can see why people like it this way, because they get to taste the natural flavor of the beef, but at the same time, I still want mine cooked. Course number two, oxtail soup. Oh. Definitely need some hot oil, but mm. That is spectacular beef broth. Mm. Wow, 
That oxtail is so tender. The oxtail is a great part of a cow. Uber tender, a little gelatinous, great for stewing. Round three is the veggie round. I'm not the biggest veggie fan, and I remember when I was a kid, my mom would say, eat your vegetables, and I would tell her I am. I'm eating the cows that's eating the vegetables, so by association, I'm eating a lot of vegetables. But that's not how it really works, right? So, bottoms up. Oh, like crispy yam. I've been eyeing these stir-fried garlics. Oh, they're like garlic chips. Beautiful eggplant fan. You know what? Nice selection of vegetables. This is a bit more expensive. This is a bit more expensive than that. This is the better one. Good. I'm excited. They're both great. They're both great. We, we love them equally, but at the same time, we like one of them better. I'm pretty sure that's how parents feel about their kids. Look at the beautiful marbling on that steak. That is indeed the roadmap to Deliciousville. And these are two different cuts of meat. That one is a bit more expensive and is fattier. You can tell it's, look how easily this is sliced. You guys hear that sizzle? That's the sound of the most wondrous beef symphony. This is the best cut, second best cut. Yeah. And I've got a front row seat to the greatest musical show on earth. And this is cooked a little more char. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at this. Is, is, there, some, is there anything more beautiful than this. I'm gonna start off with the best one because I've been waiting all day. No breakfast, no lunch. Just gonna slightly dip it in a little bit of salt. Oh my god. That is the meat of God. I feel like that beef is just playing with my feelings. My first ever bite of Kobe beef was at the Rio Con uh, in Kobe and I thought that was the most glorious beefy moment of my life. And I really didn't think any other bite of beef would ever compare. I mean, I came in here with high expectations because this is a steakhouse, that's what they do here. But still, I was thinking, how could anything be better than what I had? And holy wow. I mean, I'm still trying to recover from that. I'm gonna try the uh, the, the second one, the less one. Just a little bit of salt, nothing, nothing too fancy. You don't wanna mess with it. Don't mess with perfection. This is supposed to be, this is still A5 Wagyu. Keep in mind, but this is supposed to be slightly less better than the best. <laughs> I, I love them both equally. I do. I. Wow. That's just a. <laughs> I'm at loss for words. I, I don't. I, I don't even know what to say. And these were kids. No. No favoritism here. Equally, love them both. Let me really try to compare. So again, the slightly less better Wagyu. I, I don't need to chew. I can come to this restaurant when I'm 80 because you don't need teeth to eat here, apparently. The best Wagyu. Oh. Let me try to describe this. The best one, you can definitely tell it's fattier. So when you bite down on that piece, it's like a beef bomb exploding in your mouth. I feel like tenderness, they're about the same. And both of them will definitely give you a free trip up to beef heaven. Each bite you take is almost like flying in one of those uh, first class, beyond the first class sweets. This beef makes all the past steaks I've ever had taste like McDonald's. I came all the way to Kobe for this and it did not disappoint. I, I am so happy right now. So if you are a fan of steak, if you are a fan of beef, trust me when I tell you, you need to come here and climb this beefy Everest. Update, you know what's better than having delicious Kobe beef for lunch? Having it for dinner as well. I feel like since I'm only in Kobe for a day, eating anything besides beef is just a crime. They were just explaining to me that they were the champions for the highest quality of A5 Wagyu. Specifically for this part right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that part. This is what this place is known for. Prime Kobe beef, Chateaubriand, and this is exactly the price of my soul right here, 58,000 yen. That's a $500 steak. Kobe steak experience number two 
here is my bid. I got talked into getting the Chateaubriand, which is a starts off at $200. And I also got a cheaper version, um, but more quantity steak. And that steak starts off at around $100. So today I'm gonna tell you guys the difference between a $100 Kobe and a $200 Kobe. This is the sirloin, the Chateau Brown. This is the $200 steak, and this is the $100 steak. The sirloin visibly is so much fattier than the Chateau Brown. This is this is a lot leaner. Um, both got gorgeous marbling on there. Let's see what happens. This is the sirloin. You see the grease stripping off this thing? In this serving, he said, don't put any sauce on there because he already salt and peppered this just to eat it as it is. Let's try it. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, man. And this is one of the least expensive Kobe. That tastes better than any steak you'll ever have in New York, LA, San Francisco, anywhere, I think, outside of Kobe is not gonna taste this good. I was in San Francisco, and the, the biggest steak, the best steak I ever had was $250. That doesn't even come close to how good this tastes. Wow, that is so, so tender. I am living the beefy dream, and I hope I never wake up. This thing has a slightly charred outer shell, right? And then you penetrate the shell, and that's when the magic happens. This is the Chateau and it's cooked medium rare. Time to see what this $200 piece of steak tastes like. And keep in mind, $200 does not get you a lot of this steak, only about 100 grams. Here we go. <laughs> oh my God. That's incredible, man. <clears throat> Thank you. The Chateau is a lot leaner, it does not mean it's tougher. It's actually more tender than the sirloin that has more fat. And I feel like what sets that apart is the flavor. The beefy flavor is incredible. Let me try this again. Regular, $100 Kobe. Juice everywhere, fatty, delicious. Slightly charred on the outside. Chateau. Lean, more tender, much more beefy flavor. I feel like that's because the fat is not distracting you from the flavor of the beef. Um, wasabi on steak, which I feel like that's gonna cut down on the on the fat a lot for you. Wasabi on steak, first time. Mm, that really helps cut down on the fattiness of the steak. I'm having so much fun right now, guys. Well, this is my entertainment, eating. This is a great night out for me. Soy sauce. Rice. Rice. That's how you. That's how you like Japanese to eat it. Sushi style. Japanese sushi style. Yeah. Interesting. Well, never, never had steak this way before, but let's try it. Mm -hmm. All right. That beefy flavor gets integrated into the rice. Uh, has a nice bite. Miso rice, garlic, soy sauce, wasabi steak. That was a satisfying bite. Finally, you get a uh, serving of Japanese sprouts with some of the Wagyu mixed in, cooked in the fat of the Wagyu. Yum. Oh, oh that beef fat. <laughs> There's a lot of flavor in there. Wow. That's really, really good way to incorporate every piece of that beef. Use the fat to cook some veggies, and the veggies become magical. For some reason, I don't know, it's because I have really short-term memory, but I feel like my Kobe experience just keeps getting better and better. First at the real Com, delicious, my first Kobe experience. Then this morning, I thought it got even better, and now it even trumps the previous experience. To quantify how good that was, you have to think about the best steak you've ever had, outside of Kobe, of course. Now think about that steak. I'm gonna tell you this right now, and I'm completely serious about it. That steak that you thought was the best steak you've ever had, that's lunchable meat compared to this.
So far today, I had some incredible cuts of steak at some incredible price point. Each steak I had so far cost over $200, which is a tiny 100 grams. Granted, I had the A5 top of the line beef, but I'm just curious, how does a cheaper Kobe compare? So I just ordered another 100 grams of Kobe, but this time it's only gonna cost me around $20. Right away you can tell this is also super, super tender. Look at this. I'm poking it and I'm barely tapping this and the chopsticks is going into the beef. You can tell how incredibly soft this is. Just a little bit of salt. It's good. Mm, for a $20 steak, this thing knocks it out of the park. But of course, as it should be, there is a huge difference in taste between a $20 Kobe and like a $200 Kobe. The $200 Kobe, literally, it just goes into your mouth, it just explodes, dissolves, does a little dance, make you really happy. This steak, as good as it is, as beefy as it is, as delicious as it is, just doesn't have that velvety, silky, nulty quality. Again, I wanna emphasize, this is delicious. This will be better than 99.9% .9 of steaks you'll find outside of Kobe. Kobe, but it doesn't melt and the flavor is not nearly as explosive as the more expensive ones. With that said, this is a great value. At around 20 US dollars for 100 grams, this is about 10 times cheaper than what I had before. If you come to Kobe, you're here for Kobe beef, most likely, then in my opinion, you gotta try the best. So try the best and then come to a place like this and fill up on the rest and I guarantee you, you will still be very happy. And again, as always, all the places I went to is listed in my description box. I do not know if these places are, are the best. The first place was recommended to me the last two places I just kind of wandered in randomly but they all tasted really good to me and I think guys I, I really want to emphasize this if you love steak if you love beef you need to put Kobe on your travel and food bucket list because there is just nothing like it I cannot believe how incredibly different beef is here than anywhere else in the world. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching. And if you want to find out what else I did on this Japan trip uh, that doesn't involve food, definitely check out my vlog channel. And the link to that is in my description box below. So until we eat again. Bye.